again, bear with us. We apologize for the for the time here, and we're almost done here. So just bear with us a few more minutes. But now we're going to explain uh, the 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 most important aspect, and that's and that's the gospel itself, uh, what we would call maybe the Romans road uh, of salvation. And and so I want us to just again be patient, bear with us a few more minutes. But the first thing somebody has to do in order to be found is admit that they're lost, and in order to be saved or born again. We must admit that we are a sinner in need of a Savior, right? Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned. Every single person other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Again, God demands perfection. You know, we take tests, we go to work. We don't need perfection, right? We just need to do okay. We, a D is a passing grade, right? A C is a little bit better. But here, in order to get to heaven, we need to be perfected. And so any sin, as you mentioned earlier, even though you weren't committing the really bad sins, uh, sin is a sin is a sin as far as uh, in order to get into heaven or not. And obviously we know that because heaven is perfect, and if, and if sin was allowed into heaven, the same thing would happen in heaven that happened in the perfect Garden of Eden and here on earth, and, and we'd have the same situation. And so it's not that God doesn't want to let people in, it's just that sin cannot enter into heaven. And it says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I love Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, because it puts uh, a lot of really bad things, uh, I think highlighted by murderers, uh, in line with all liars. And so basically saying, like, if you've murdered somebody, you're a murderer. If you told just one lie, even if it's a little white lie, a lie is a lie is a lie. If you told one lie, you're a liar. And it says that because of that, uh, both murderers and liars will have their, their part in the same exact place, the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Right, and, that, and, and that's very clear if you read Revelation chapter 20, the same place that Satan himself, the Antichrist, and, and the beast are going to be at. And so it's, um, it's, it's, it should be sobering. It should wake us up to the fact that even if I told just one lie, I'm going to have my, my, my part in the lake of burning with fire and brimstone as a murderer and, and, and as Satan himself. And so what do you think it is that causes some people to, to not be willing to admit that, that they're a sinner, even if they've just told a lie? Yeah, it's a great question. I think the, the biggest problem, in my experience, has been that people categorize sins. They say, well, just like we talked about, well, I, you know, I'm not a murderer, I, mean, I don't kill people, and you know, I don't go around raping women, and I don't do this, and I don't do that. And, and so they categorize one sin as harsher or worse than other sins. And we can admit that there are consequences that are greater to different sins, um, for instance, you know, if I if I murder someone, you know, I'm I'm, I'm if, say I murder a man who's married and has children. Well, I've murdered someone's husband, uh, a children's father, uh, and and someone's son. So I'm I'm going to cause pain and heartache to a lot more people than if I just if I just do something in my heart or if I just do a sin. You know, where I tell a little white lie. Again, you know, a half truth is a whole lie regardless. Amen. But the consequences are different. The consequences are not the same. And so because the consequences are different as far as here on earth, obviously the consequences eternally are all the same. But here on earth, they're a little different. So people tend to view some sins as worse than others. And so if I don't commit these, then I'm okay. Then I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is that all sin, no matter how small or how big we think it is, in the sight of God, is horrible. Because the back of chapter 1 and verse 13 says, Thou art of pure eyes unto the whole evil and can't not look on iniquity. That's really he can't good. even look on sin. Whether it's a small little, what we would consider a small little white lie, or someone committing murder, or rape, or adultery, or, you know, one of the big ones as we would refer to them. And so in the eyes of God, they're all bad. Yeah. They're all, but people can't seem to understand that because we live in a performance-based society. And if I do this, then I'm rewarded with this. And if I do this good, then I get this good. If I, and as long as I'm doing some good things that's the problem people think that they have some goodness in them yeah. and until we come to the realization that no matter how good we behave on this earth we are we are disgusting our behavior is disgusting in the sight of god until we get to that point we don't we won't truly understand yeah. how, how desperately we need to be saved because even the things that we would say we do is, are, are good, and they may be in and of themselves, but most of them we're doing them for self-reward, right? Sure. I'm a hard worker. I go to work. Well, you, you want a paycheck, you know? Of course. And, 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 you, you know. You want to have more for yourself and for your family. Yeah. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, 
let's not act like that's pleasing God or that's you know that's something that makes him smile on us and say oh you know, he's yeah. such a good human being no because th that verse that says written there's none righteous no not one there is no one not one person that does right all the time that's right not one person that's right not one and so you know, a lot of people, you know, they, they refuse to believe because they think, well, I don't want to believe in a God or I don't even want to go if, if, if he's willing to send, you know, me to hell or, or somebody else. And so, you know, God gets kind of the, I mean, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, uh, when he asked God, the Father, to remove the cup from him and the, uh, was, was really not so much the crucifixion, but the fact that our sin being put on him was going to separate the two of them for the only time ever in eternity. Also, the only time recorded in the scripture where, where Jesus actually calls the Father God and not my Father. Uh, and, and, and that's what it was, because God, like you said, he cannot look upon sin. Uh, and so it's not, it's not that, you know, it's not that he doesn't, that he wants to go to hell. I mean, if anything, he, he more than anybody did it did did the most to, to make it to, to where we don't have to go to hell. Yeah. Um, but but a lot of times people kind of blame him and say yeah, well, they, they that mis, he they misconstrue the scriptures. God doesn't send anyone to hell. Yeah, he doesn't send anyone to hell. They send themselves there. Yeah, hell was not even created for human beings. It was created for the devil and his demons. Yeah, if any person that's a human being goes to hell, it'll be literally over God's dead body, literally, yeah. Yeah. right, Amen. because Amen. he died, so they, they, they wouldn't have to, and if they go there, they go there as an intruder, they're not supposed to be there, and there's only one sin, it's not murder, it's not adultery, it's not rape, it's not incest, it's not whatever other sins, those are not the sins that, that, that cause a person to go to hell, uh, the Bible says in John chapter 16, where the Lord's talking about, you know, I must go send the comforter. Uh, nevertheless, I tell you the truth in verse 7, it is expedient for you that I go away. It's important, it's necessary. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Verse 8 says, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Verse 9 of John 16, of sin, what sin? Because they believe not on me. That's good. That is the one sin, technically the one sin, that separates a human being from God the Father for all of eternity. It rejects that one it. There. Yeah, rejecting the, the conviction that the Holy Spirit Christ. has put in us. Yeah, Exactly. Absolutely. Rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ and, and his gift of salvation. It, it's as if we looked the gift horse in the mouth and said, no, nope, I don't want that. Yeah. You know, I, I see it, uh, I acknowledge it, but I refuse it. I reject it. Yeah, so so sin, not God, sends people to hell. That's sends human beings to hell. Correct. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 says, Wherefore, by one man sin entered the world, talking about Adam, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, because all have sinned. And, and as you mentioned earlier, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, which I typically follow up John 3.16 with, because he so loved us. Well, how much did he love us? Well, Romans 5 eight tells us that God commendeth, or proved, his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? Think about uh, the amount of people that you would actually be willing to, to, to die for, right? And then go a step further and say, okay, now not only would it, maybe I would be willing to die for, but I would actually allow my son to die for them. Yeah. And, and I mean, that, that list goes completely away in my book. And I, and I love many people, but I, and I might... I would be even willing to die for a few of them, but I'm not going to sacrifice my son for any of them. And so, and so, so like you said, he over his own dead body, right? I mean, when, yeah. when people talk about that, when, and if it's something that you're listening and you've, you've thought this, think about Romans 5, 8, think about John 3, 16, prior to, to trying to blame God for sending people to hell. You know, and I think a lot of people think, well, God could do anything. Well, that's not necessarily true, right? God cannot lie. The Bible, the scripture says God cannot lie. And so he can't go against his own character. He can't go against his own attributes. And since he is just, he must punish sin. And since we are unable to, he actually provided the way for us. But the problem is we want to wave our fist in God's face and say, well, we want to do it our way. And he's saying, well, I, I wish you could, but you can't. This is the only way, right? I, I, love, um, I love the contrast between John 3.16, Romans 5.8, and Galatians 2.20. This, this blows my mind. John 3.16, for God so loved the world. He loved the entire world, all that have ever lived, all that ever will live, all of humanity, right? And from eternity past, whatever, till since they were created, till whenever they, you know, there's the last human beings ever born. He loved, he loves the world. But Romans 5, 8 says, but God commended his love toward us. All of a sudden now, it's a, it's a more narrow, it's a, it's a smaller group. It's the world. He loves the world, absolutely. 
but he loves us. But he loves us. But I love Galatians 2.20, where the Apostle Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me. That's good. Who That's loved good. me. And gave himself, not just for the whole world, not just for the, the smaller group of us, but he died for me. Yeah, for good. Pedro Morales, for Frank Suglio, for whomever. You place your name there. He specifically died for you. Amen. Uh, not just everyone in the world, which which is true, he did. Not just the smaller group, or maybe the Christians, uh, or, 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 you know, those that, uh, I shouldn't say Christians, maybe those that are, are seeking God. Mm -hmm. But he died for me, who wasn't seeking God. Yeah. Who had no desire yeah. to, to, to know God. He died for me. What a, what a great love. While we were yet sinners, while we were at our worst, not now that we're somewhat cleaned up by his grace and his robed in his righteousness. And that, yeah, that's, that, that is a, that is a life changing uh, statement right there. And absolutely. If, if you can get it, that's salvation. Yeah. I mean, if you get it and you believe it and you, you accept it, then you're saved. He's, but he, if you don't, that's right. He, 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 you can't just believe that he is a Messiah. He's a way. You can't even believe that he is the Messiah, you know, just blanket everybody. He has to be my Messiah. He has to be right. your Messiah. It has to be a personal uh, commitment. And I, I, love the, I love Romans chapter 6, verse 23, because to me, this is the, the gospel, you know, in, in one verse, right? It says, for the wages, right? We know we go to work, we earn our wages, we earn our payment. So the wages or the payment of sin is death. That's talking about the second death in the in the lake that burned with the fire and brimstone that Revelation twenty one eight was talking about. It says, but the but the verse doesn't end there, right? So you hear the wages of sin is death. Well, that's that's bad news. That's no good. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life, and that's well, that's good news. He has a gift. He wants to give it to us, but again, we have to receive it. And how do we do that? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so the problem is sin. Right, uh, and, and that sin leads to, to eternity separated from God. Death is separation, separated from God. Our souls are separated from our body upon physical death. Our souls are separated from God for all of eternity in the light that will burn with the fire and brimstone, where they are tormented day and night uh, if we don't trust in Christ you know, for all of eternity. So that's the separation, that's the death that it's talking about. So the problem is death. But the solution, oh, amen, the solution is the Lord Jesus Christ. John chapter 14, verse 6, says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man, no man, come to the Father but by me. And even though we don't want to be um, argumentative with people, and there may be uh, people listening that, that, that are trusting in, in other things and thinking all roads lead to heaven, and you know, because I say the name, Allah, or or even because you know a lot of a lot of other mm -hmm. denominations talk about Jesus, but it's not the Jesus of the Bible that That's they're right. going the same way. But He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by Me." Uh, Acts chapter four verse twelve says, "Neither is there salvation in any other, uh, for there is none other name under heaven, none given among men wherein we must be saved." And so. Oh, okay. Jesus is very exclusive. That's right, yeah. yeah. Now, it's everybody can come, right? All are welcome. That's right. But the, the, the pathway to get there is, is, is as thin as that tightrope that the, blonde, the great blonde walked on to get across that, right. that gulf of the Niagara Falls. And so if we want to get from Earth, point A, to, to, to Heaven, point B, the other side of that gulf, which is, which is in the illustration hell, we must go the narrow path, the way, through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we just have a, we just have a few more verses to go through, and I'm going to ask Pastor Morales to take us through, uh, basically, uh, so once somebody acknowledges uh, that they're to this point where they're lost because of their sin, and they, and they have an understanding and they, and they uh, acknowledge who God is, then we always must end with uh, where the, 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 the walk starts, right, in taking our steps of standing, and that's Romans chapter 10, verses 9, 10, and 13. And so I'm going to ask you to kind of walk us through those verses, and then maybe even as we close, um, you know, t talk to uh, those who might be listening, um, how, how exactly you ignite it by the gospel in verse 13, as you mentioned, making it specific and personally uh, with their name. Amen. So again, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart. That's the key. We talked about it earlier. We must transfer the information 
uh, from our heads to our heart. We must. Mm-hmm. It must be more than just facts. It needs to be faith in those facts. Yeah, and, and it, even the title of the Lord Jesus, right? Not just Jesus, but He's the Lord. He's right. He's the Lord Jesus. He's God in the flesh. That's right. He is Lord of all. Amen. And, he, and I'm confessing that He is Lord of me. Mm, that's that he good. Is Lord of my life and Lord of my soul. You're confessing that. You're believing that. Thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Uh, you're believing in the gospel. That he died for your sins, he died in your place, he went to hell in your place, and he rose again the third day for you to have the victory over sin. Verse 10 says, For with the heart of man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Once we believe in our hearts on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says we believe unto righteousness. That doesn't mean that we're going to become physically uh, righteous, but that means that spiritually speaking, God sees us as a righteous person. Mm. Uh, even though we're still going to sin, we're still going to do things wrong, we're not going to do right every single time, God sees us because we're in Christ. We're we're placed within the Lord himself, and he who lived a sinless and perfect life, now our accounts are transferred. Yeah. So basically, he takes our sinful account, which he did on the cross, and we now take his sinless account and God sees us as if we're sinless, as if we've never committed any other any sins ever in mm-hmm. our entire life, as if we've never done anything wrong, never thought anything wrong, never said anything wrong. Uh, and that's how he sees us once we accept Christ. And and that implies a once-in-a-lifetime decision, right? You don't have to say this, the, the sinner's prayer, quote-unquote, or, or believe in him day by day, because if you believe, you believe, and that's it. He died on the cross once, and we're implying, you know, you know, we're imputing that righteousness one time upon that, that belief and that confession. Now, we confess our sins day by day to renew fellowship with our Heavenly Father, but not for salvation. That's a one-time thing. That's right. So one-time transaction, as I always tell people, um, I use this illustration. I say to folks, I say, look, when I asked Trina to marry me, we went to the altar, we said our vows, we were married. Um, <clears throat> we, you know, we obviously went and got a marriage certificate and all that sort of thing. Uh, after we were married, I, you know, lost my temper or I said something wrong or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, I would ask her to forgive me for losing my temper or saying something wrong. But I would not need to say, hey, will you marry me again? You know, it's, uh, the marriage is a one-time transaction. The day-to-day interaction, okay, that needs some work and that needs sure. some cleaning up from time to time. But but the relationship is is firm. The relationship is set. You know, it doesn't. I don't have to say, well, I got to ask. We got to have another wedding. Mm, we got to yeah. get married again. We got to you know buy another dress. It's a know? great illustration. Yeah. yeah, it's a one-time transaction. Even though the day-to-day. From day to day, I'm going to say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, didn't, I shouldn't have thought that. I shouldn't have said that. Will you please forgive me? You know, we're forgiven eternally, uh, but our day to day relationship needs constant uh, give and take. You know, asking for forgiveness, Him giving us forgiveness, uh, Him convicting us of our sins. Uh, so we're still going to make mistakes. Now, Romans 10 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah, all you have to do is say, Lord, help me. I believe. I messed up. I know I'm wrong. Just calling. You know, the way we call, uh, I use this illustration as well. I say to people, if, if I were out on the ocean on a, on a boat and I heard someone shouting and screaming that was drowning, they're just calling. Man, I would, I would turn my boat in their direction and try to give them a lifeline and, and bring them up out of the water. You know, they didn't have to do anything uh, specific. They didn't have to say any flowery prayer. They didn't have to you know, uh, offer me any money. All they had to say was, hey, help, just help, I need help. And that's all we're doing. We're calling on the Lord saying, Lord, I need your help. Uh, you're the only one that can save me. You're the only one that can spare me from eternity separated from God. I'm calling on you. And if you have not done that, man, today, may today be the day that you do that. That's right, yeah. And so, you know, again, you once, you, once you're repenting and believing, that receiving, that's like the accepting of that gift. And that's you know, and it has to be done in that order. And so, if you if you're sitting here listening, and, and you might be saying, "Well, I've done that before," well, but but did you truly understand salvation prior to today? And so, we, again, it, it has to be 
at a, at a point where you totally acknowledge uh, whatever you were trusting in, repenting of that, turning from that, you know, acknowledging your sin, regretting that, uh, believing in him and only him, that he is who he said he was, and that you're putting all your faith and trust in him, and then at that point calling out to him to be your savior and not trusting in anything or anybody else, or you know, mainly yourself and your works. And so if, if, if you have not done that, if you want to talk a little bit more, uh, please contact us. Of course, again, this is going out to our church family, but if if this gets shared with somebody else, uh, we are First Baptist Church of Kingstown in Alexandria, Virginia. And that's First Baptist Church of Kingstown in Alexandria, Virginia. And you can go on our website, you can get our phone numbers, our, our emails, uh, anything that we could do to be a help and a blessing. Uh, and and if, and if you made the decision, please let us know. We want to we wanna celebrate with you. We want to rejoice in that decision. That's right. And so, again, I do apologize about the, the lengthiness of this, but I think Pastor Morales would, would include and uh, conclude, and, and everyone listening to that, that this is too important to shortchange or go through too fast. And so, and so I, as, we, as we now all stand together moving forward, we'll, we'll be much quicker in, t- in talking about our next steps. And so uh, we appreciate you guys listening. And, again, we will be putting these out there uh, every day until Vision Night, which is um, January 20th. And please, if you've, if you've not yet been to uh, Wednesday evening service, make sure that this be your first. Amen. All right. All right, you guys have a good name. Pastor, you want to say goodbye? All right, take care, folks. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Okay.